join us this evening as we talk about a coffee shop reopened maybe in a town near you but under a family business so we ask could you work with your family staying on the theme of love we talk about age gap love and the questions that are still asked and would you say no to love if there was an age difference also we talk about a pub maybe around the corner from you reopening celebrating sending their children back to school with free fizz and cake. Would you join the celebration? So, talking about sweet but tasty, joining me on the panel tonight, Nicholas James, it's Sandra Overton. Also, as we talk about a bit of fizz in our lives, we have Gemma Love. And also the sweet but a little bit naughty D. Kelly. All that and a lot more on this week's Loose Link. Good evening, panel. How are we all? Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Good just, evening. Just a bit quick of an update. Uh, Sandra Overton is supposed to be Joe Lloyd, but Joe Lloyd has had family family crisis, so Sandra Overton has stepped in for us this evening. Welcome, Sandra. This is your first show. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll look after you. We'll look after you. Uh, Gemma, Gemma's loves first show as well. Gemma, it's great to have you on the, as, as a panellist. Welcome. And we've got the fabulous D. Kelly back with us this evening. I'm the old pro of the panel, eh, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> we just missed you, D. We're so pleased that you're back. Um, let's start on last week's polls, because throughout our discussions. So, last week's polls were, would you ask an ex for advice on a new relationship? A hundred percent said no. <laughs> <laughs> Are we surprised there in the slides? No, absolutely not. Also, no. we, we talked about the one new campaign that Lincolnshire County Council have started. Would it highlight more mental health problems? Do you think it would highlight it? A hundred percent said yes. So if you did go and have a look at the website, thank you for looking into that. Also, should the police and CPS, the one that I was really passionate about last week, uh, work together more? 90% said yes, 10% said no. So a bit of a difference there, a bit of a, I was, I wasn't, I was ex I was expecting a hundred percent again, but maybe people disagree with me. How rude! Um, tonight we we go to our first hometown. Good evening, Scunthorpe. Good evening, the people of Scunthorpe. As we talk about a coffee shop that reopens in Devon. So this coffee shop reopens, and it's in the North Lincolnshire shopping park. It will be selling sweet treats, light lunches, and coffee. But it is run under a family business. So, panel, my question to you is, could you work with your family? I can just about live with mine, Nick. Never mind, <laughs> never, never mind work with them as well. But I'm sure they'd probably say the same about me, if I'm honest. <laughs> well, I have worked with uh, my husband, and I worked with him for uh, 14 years. Wow. It did work very well. Um, I think what one has to do is to determine at the end of the day who is going to be the boss mm. because there has to be somebody at the top. Uh, my husband had been in business for eight years before that. I left Marks and Spencers reluctantly to join him, but I have to say I never looked back and enjoyed every minute. Oh, it did work. You have to leave work at work and home at home. If you have a row at home, you can't take it to work and vice versa. Uh, but of course, as Brian used to tell everybody, I had the best perk of all the 17 staff because I slept with the boss. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've also worked for my partner. He was my boss. Um, he was the boss at work. I'm clearly the boss at home. Um, the only thing I would say is 
we had nothing to talk about over dinner because you get home and you go and have your tea and you say to your partner, how was work? What did you do at work today? Yeah. And actually, I knew what you'd done at work today because I'd been there. <laughs> so <laughs> it kind of like, there was nothing to talk about in that respect. But actually, we worked together really well and I would work with him again. I'm not like, I, I, I'm not very good at sort of doing what I'm told. And <laughs> really? Why does yeah. that shock me? I don't know, <laughs> I honestly don't know. And it's kind of like, uh, no, I'd have to be the boss, without a doubt. Um, yeah, no, I'm definitely not good at doing as I'm told. But then again, neither are my children. Um, so like they, they never do what they're told either. So I just don't think it'd work in the, Ke the, Kelly, the Kelly family run business. <laughs> I would come and support you, baby. I would come and support you. Um, when, 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 so taking that aside then, I, I completely agree with all of you. It must be very, you must be a very special person to eat, sleep and work with your partner. And if, and if it does work, that hence why I'm single. If it does work, <laughs> if it does work, it works really, really well. But do you think there's added pressure on special occasions to get on with each other? So do you, do you dread a family get-together or do you think, do you actually look forward to it? What I'm talking about family get-togethers is a little bit like Christmas where you're brought together and it's almost like you're forced to be happy. Do you find that quite difficult? I'm too forced to be happy. I actually, Christmas is okay because obviously I just spend all day cooking and it's like, it, it, it's nice because I put my all into like my Christmas dinners. Do you know what I mean? It's like, but I don't, I wouldn't say like, and I think because I don't work with my family, I think it would make sort of family gatherings a little bit, you know, more special. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't find it difficult at all to um, be with family gatherings. No, um, no. I, I. I think I can all, in honesty, say we worked very well, really, together. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. just wondering which of my family and extended family are likely to watch this. And um, yeah, I. I love all family gatherings. Uh -huh. I yeah, me can't too. Can't wait to go to them all. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna be one on the fence then because I I I I I'm fifty fifty. I'm quite good at chosen family. I'm quite good at having having a good day with chosen family, and I do do that much to my mum's disgust. I do do that more over the Christmas period and birthday periods because it's the people I want to be with, not the people that I'm forced to be with, um, and. Child, childhood wasn't that great so trying to get us all together you could almost guarantee there was some sort of disagreement in my house or there was this but I think there is an added pressure when it comes to even though you laughed at 15 and when it comes to like Christmas and birthdays that added pressure that everybody's got to be smiling and having a lovely time and this that and the other and I don't think that that always works we don't smile, Nick. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, don't get me wrong. We spend time together, but we don't smile. There's no smiling. Mm -hmm. But I think it's like, I just, I don't know. Like, external family, there's hundreds of us. Do you know what I mean? We're a massive Irish family. But kind of like close family, we're so small. And I think that just makes it that much, you know, much more, much nicer. Do you know what I mean? It's like, we're all different. I mean, I, I love my little unit, I do. Do you know what I mean? And it's kind of like, and I like being the mum. And, that, and, and that's is the boss. The boss, right? <laughs> the same thing, isn't it? And I think that's why I, I do have, I think because I haven't got my mum and dad anymore, and it's kind of like, you know, I, I, I'd be seen as the head of the family. And I think that's why I value it a little bit more, I think. Do you I think that's why I struggle with like, I, I see myself as the head of the family, but I've still got my mum around and my partner's still got his parents around. So it's difficult because we're quite different families as well. So we have very different traditions. So it's trying to fit a little bit of their tradition, a little bit of our tradition when I just want to do it my way because I'm a bit of a control freak when it comes well, to... Well, I, I do just wonder as well, 
like um I don't I don't know much of your background here now, dear. So tell me if you're wrong, if, I, if I'm wrong in any way. But I, I, you do a lot of work off your own back now, don't you? You do you do you're more self-employed than you are anything else. Yeah. So if you found your and for you, Sandra, actually, this is a good question for you as well, actually. If you found yourself being in that being in your world now, Dee, and being self-employed and stuff like that, and being like your own boss, like Sandra said, in the business, do you think you would find it difficult to go back to a company setting? Yeah. No, um, because we, when, we, when we had the company, uh, my family were younger. They'd just got married and just beginning family. And we were a very close-knit family I mean we're not any longer because we've gone up like a rocket of fireworks because you personally know my situation but we do still see each other uh, we do make a point we're perhaps not all together on Christmas day but we do make a point of seeing each other uh, at some point but I've never been one my mother-in-law insisted that we all went to her house on Christmas day and I said, I would never, ever put that on my three daughters. I would like them at home before they were married. But once they were married, if they chose to be with their husband's family, then that quite suited me. Because to me, that was fair. Um, the, most of them came to me for dinner and they went off to their various uh, in-laws for tea. Uh, but I never, ever put the pressure on them because I think the minute you put pressure on people they I would hate anybody anybody at all at any given time to be sat in my house wishing they were somewhere else yeah, yeah, because yeah. you haven't yeah. got them and and there is well I think there's a lot of pressure put on Christmas day I love Christmas I make a lot of it people come to my house and say it looks like Santa's grotto uh, but I do feel that if people want to come, anybody's welcome at my house. But if they want to be somewhere else, so be it. Yeah, but I yeah, love Christmas. Really and it is a family time. But it, remember, at the end of the day, what we tend to forget is it is only another day. Yeah, and yeah. I think a lot of families, I know from experience, a lot of families are put on a lot of pressure. And yeah. you well, don't well, get your family. What about you, Dee? Because I saw, I saw you shaking your head there when I said, could you go back into a company setting? What, what about you? I do you know what it is? It's kind of like, I suppose, you know, I'm saying no because I suppose of my current situation. But at the end of the day, if push comes to shove and you have to, you've got to suck it up, don't you? Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, but like saying to Sandra, I absolutely love Sandra's approach and stuff. But I think I'm just kind of, because mine is still a lot younger. Do you know yes. what I mean? So, so obviously, you know, they have to be here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. They have to be here. Um, and I think that's the difference as well. But I mean, you know, I, I can't see in the future, it probably will, you know, like say if my son grows up and gets married, he's like, oh, I'm going to blah, blah. And I'll be like, no. But there's always boxing day. But that, well, yes. But uh, you've got to put yourself, you've got to put yourself in your daughter's husband's mother's position that she probably feels exactly the same as you <clears throat> so therefore in my book it's fair go to one one year and go to another another year because that keeps the happy family yeah because well, i tried well, to do Sandra. i tried to do two yeah. christmas dinners on the same day once not to upset anybody we went <laughs> to my mum's because she eats christmas dinner around oh, 12 God. and my ex-mother-in-law they have theirs as their evening meals so we've done the three courses at my mum's then drove a two-hour drive to Burton upon oh, it's like the thing we did say that sandra i was literally just allowed to say that yeah, and you the bigger and different she had about four didn't she <laughs> But that's really interesting, actually. Let us know. If you're not already on our Facebook page, please follow it. It's just called Loose Links because you find out a lot of information that we share throughout the week. We're also on other social media platforms, so please join it. We're on Twitter, Instagram, 
and Facebook. And also, we've now got a YouTube page. So remember that you are the Fifth Panel member, and we'd love to hear your views as well as ours. But slowly moving on and talking about love, let's talk about age gap love. So we're on the theme of love this month, as it's September, and we've decided, and last week, we talked all about exes and going back to an ex for ex relationships and stuff like that. So I've looked at and delved in a little bit deeper into um, looking at age gap love this week because um, love. <laughs> love it because there's a lot of celebrities now that are in age gap relationships and at the beginning they were they were said it was all about money and stuff like that but actually they survived it so the couple that come to my head the couple of people that come to my head is Stephen Fry and his partner uh, Tom Daly and his partner, 20 years difference. And Barbara Windsor is a huge one that's been in a, a, a big age gap relationship. And he's still supporting her, even though she's really poorly. It could have been his get out claw. So would you roll out a new relationship if somebody was 20 years older or younger than you? I'm open to offers. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> you know, I, kind of I kind of don't think I've got the energy to sort of take on board a 20, 25-year-old. You know what I mean? No, I don't even think I've got an energy to take on board a 90-year-old. <laughs> no, I wouldn't want a 90-year-old too much. Mind you, yeah, I would quite like a, a 90-year-old with a yacht, you know, and a nice uh, bank balance yacht. and... You know, probably don't, not wishing him any harm, but a terminal illness, you know, it wouldn't be too bad, would it? But, um, no, I, well, I've, I've now been on my own for 10 years and I don't really think I could live with anybody. Uh, if I met somebody, I'm not, you should never say never. One should never, ever say never. I don't think, um, I certainly wouldn't marry again. I would be quite happy if he took me out for a meal, took me out, came and had a glass of wine, probably came for the weekend and then went back to his bungalow and I stay here. I've got a friend who does that and it Good. works very well. Yeah, oh, wow. it works excellent. She's more, she said, there's no way she'd move in with him. She doesn't have any dirty washing. He does all that, does all his own washing. He just takes her out and, you know, takes her a bouquet of flowers and I think that's... I could quite go down that road, I think. Yes. See, that's the kind of thing, though, as well. It's kind of like, you know, I mean, there's no secret. I'm like, I'm 50 next year, do you know what I mean? And it's kind of like, when you come out of a long-term relationship, you're kind of thinking, God, do you know what I mean? Am I going to be on my own forever? Or, you know, the dating game at 50 years old, it's like... Yeah. Well, I'm 77, and I was married for 54 years before my husband left me. So, uh, 47 years before he left me. So, um, yeah, I know what you mean. And I think, oh, no, I couldn't be doing with that now. No, no. Um, well, well, um, obviously, we met Gemma's partner last week, who is James, yes. who was on the show last week. Gemma, if James was 20 years older than you, would that, would that bother you at all? Well, he's clearly much, much older than me. <laughs> <laughs> he's a whole 18 months older than me and I never <laughs> left him ever. Um, no, I don't think it would have mattered, actually. Um, like, I separated from my husband when I met James and I was kind of in the same, like, oh, I'm going to be, like, on my own forever. Looking mm -hmm. back, I was 36, you know. <laughs> a lot of people don't start their families until that age nowadays. But I was like, oh, I'm 36, I'm going to be on the shelf forever, blah, blah, blah. And then I met James. And I don't think it would have mattered to me if he was older than me, younger than me. Possibly if he was significantly younger, I would maybe feel a little bit more self-conscious about that. But yeah. as long as they treat you well and they're nice to you and you're happy together, does it matter? It's just, no. I know people, it is just a number and it really is a lot of it's time. down to the individual it's down to the individuals isn't it every yeah. time i mean 
really so weird because when I say a lot of mine, I don't mean a lot of mine as if I've had a, a lot, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, we'll believe you. We'll believe what I'm trying you. to say, like, like say it gives two- Benefit Street a whole <laughs> different name. <laughs> <laughs> The two serious ones, there's only been like one year between us, one, you know, obviously me being the youngest, even though a lot of people presume I'm older. Um, but it's kind of like, I don't know, sort of like, do you just look at someone without, so, I mean, obviously I personally wouldn't go out and, and physically eye up someone in their 20s, because to mm. me, my children are in their 20s, do you know what I mean? It's like... But I don't know, I suppose if you build up a rapport with someone like Gemma was saying. Well, let's, you... let's take you out the equation for a second then. Let's take, let's take you out the equation. And, and unfortunately, Jo isn't here this evening to say what she was going to say. So I will repeat what Jo was going to say. But take you out the equation and uh, say it's one of your children that come forward to you and say they're, they're 23. And they, they come forward to you and say, I found somebody, mum but they're 53 years old. They're, they're 53. I really like them. I don't care about the age, but I want your opinion. Jo said she would say, what did Jo say she would say? She said... It, um, Her first one was, are they rich? Is he, is he loaded? Can he give me grandchildren? <laughs> yes. Well, that's fine. Have him. <laughs> that was yeah, so right. I think I think as long as my children were happy, do you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, like, yes. And and that's kind of all that matters to me. So like, yes. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd be sitting there thinking, I hope he's not eyeing me up from that sofa. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't, honestly. But no, you know, in my heart of hearts, it's kind of like as long as you know, my daughter's like the older one. As long as he treated her properly, treated mm. her respectfully. Do you know what I'm saying? Didn't ever, ever put a finger on her. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And she was, story. she was happy. Then, does age really come into it? It's like, mm. I think regardless at the end of, of the age, day. Does, oh, go on, does, Gemma. Sorry, go on, Gemma. Yeah. Regardless of age, like, does your parents' opinion really count? Because yeah. I think it's like someone said to me, "Oh, if my mum says, oh, I don't like your partner, but I liked him and I was happy, then." that's kind of all that matters to me. I don't really care what other people think. Yeah. yeah. I think at the end of the day, all a mum wants is for her children to be happy. Yeah. 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 To find that happy. And, it, it? and if you're happy, that's it. Um, it's, I think at the end of the day, it's all down to the individual. Again, it's down to the individual person. Would, would, people's, would people's opinions on what they said to you impact on the relationship that you were in no i don't really care about other people's opinions to be fair no i don't i mean when i was um in my early 20s i think i was probably 22 and i was dating a guy that it was in his 40s and to be fair nobody ever really said anything to us to i think i was always quite an old soul and he was quite young for his age so we probably both balanced out in our 30s yeah. to be fair. Um, mm. and looks wise i don't think you could particularly tell that he was significantly older. So I didn't really have anyone like on the street going, oh, is that your dad? <laughs> or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But I think like if somebody had said that, I would have been like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the scary part. I think I, I, think I disagree here. Um, with, with my last relationship, um, I do wish that I had my ears opened a little bit more. And I do wish, looking back, that I had listened that little bit more, only because what they said eventually came true. But well, I think, it's as, as you say, really, I don't want to dwell on it, but as I, as I say, because I've moved forward, but as I say, I think, I, think it's, I think it's good to take on board what other people say, to listen and to feel like they're not being ignored, especially if, if you've known yeah. that person a long time. But actually, ultimately, it's you making the decision. That's what I was going to say. At the end of the day, do you know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. like everybody could say anything that they like. And, you, you, you know, you as your, your own person, yeah. you, know, you, you know, you've got to make your own decisions, don't you? It's yeah. Like it, but you as well, the fact that they do say love is blind. And sometimes mm-hmm. it really yeah. is. And no matter how close that friend is, it's saying to you, look, I'm seeing all these red flags. You know, you're blinkered. You're yeah. like happy yeah. in love in the honeymoon period. And you don't see it, no matter how much someone tells you. Sometimes you 
don't want there to are, see it. To, 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 to repeat what you've just said, there are two things. Love is blind and marriage is the eye opener. <laughs> and we all have a brain until we fall in love and then yeah. we lose it here, here. Yeah. two good sayings there yeah. yeah yeah exactly but tell us if you if you're in an age gap successful relationship how long you've been with that person and what sort of discriminated questions do you still get asked today we'd love to hear from you you're the fifth panel member remember that we go to our last town this evening so i'm in the driver's seat and i'm taking you all to ruskington good evening ruskington as we talk about a pub called the red lion as it's getting free fizz and cake at 10 30 a.m for parents sending their children back to school now what are your views on this what an absolute load of too what? polite to say too I'm much of a lady to say normally not sandra honest to god normally i just would <laughs> no, at the end of the day kids should be in school full stop yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, so what, they're going to give these parents free alcohol. So what, you get alcoholic, you know, drunk parents turning up to collect children from school. No, it's absolutely stupid. Get rid of the fizz and just give them the cake. <laughs> <laughs> coffee and a cake. Yeah, I'd be quite happy with a coffee and a cake. But, you know, that time in the morning. It's another great. excuse for the alcohol, isn't it? Unless it's just to top everyone up from all the alcohol they've consumed over lockdown. Well, well, the thing is, what I can't get in my head, why, why, would you, why would you wave your kid on a bus to school and go, well, I need to celebrate that. Yeah, I absolutely need to celebrate that. I've just put my child on the bus and sent them to school. I just think, how bloody ridiculous. And as, as, as you say... There are people out there, and I am categorising a little bit, but there are people out there that struggle with alcohol, mm -hmm. that struggle with... And oh. the pub owner is not going to know that. So people that are just going for the three fears, what if they carry on all day? What if they forget where they are? What if they forget to pick up their child from school? I mean, one of, the, one of the biggest hashtags of the time at the moment is save our children, yeah? Right. Um, okay. Children have been forgotten majorly during this lockdown. I mean, I'm not being funny, like in Birmingham, where we're from, I think in the matter of about six weeks, we had three children lose their life at the hands of their parents, yeah? Oh. And that was basically, you know, nobody keeping an eye on them, no safeguarding, anything done. It's just absolutely scandalous. But for someone who presumably is a responsible adult who's in this pub, is offering people alcohol while their children are in school, I, th I think they should absolutely hang their heads in shame. Yeah. What's your thoughts, I agree. Well, I've, I've got three children, all of school age, and, you know, lockdown, it... It has been tough, like Dee said. It's it's been hard on the kids, you know. To put it into, into perspective, I read a Facebook post the other day that said, you know, if your kids are playing up, just bear in mind that one day they came home from school and never saw their friends again. Which I suppose to, especially to young children, that's what happened. And you know, we've been quite lucky that we've had a lot to do to keep ours occupied and stuff like that. But I'm very aware that. Other people don't. For instance, one one of the ladies in the village that I know, um, she'd asked another lady if she could print off the schoolwork that they were putting on the internet because they didn't have access to the internet. And it's all right, school saying, oh, well, they are still working because we're sending this work out. But if, if you can't access it, mm -hmm. then surely the school should be checking, really, that yes. they can get access to it or make provisions for printed copies to be sent around to them, et cetera, et cetera. But saying that, I was one of the parents that was looking forward to them going back. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. I was doing a little countdown, and Nick, Nick knows this because I, I put it on Facebook. Um, my middle son was due to go back to school on Thursday. And at 5 a.m. on Thursday morning, he came down with a sickness and diarrhea bug oh, and oh, couldn't yeah. go back to school till the Monday. So all my like, yes, 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 they're going, I'm going to clean the house. 
no, I had him for an extra few days. Oh, don't. Mine goes back tomorrow. His first day back is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is as well, I do, I do agree with you. And talking about children, I also feel sorry for the adolescents people that are in their teenage years. That actually, teenage a teenage time is can be really difficult as it is, and sometimes I remember. Well, I can only go from personal experience. I broke down from my mum and walked away from my mum for a little bit because I I was just rebellious and very young, and, and my friends on the street and in the park and all of that it meant so much to me in in that time of my life, and all of that has been stopped. And I just, I feel sorry for the teenagers out there that have now stuck behind a door. And I, I just think mental health is going to go shooting up. I really do. It already has, same as domestic violence. increased. scary, by isn't it? And then you're going to offer people alcohol while you've just dropped their kids off to school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I well, think we've, we've all had extra alcohol, haven't we, during lockdown? Let's be honest. Yeah, so, yeah, of course we have, yeah. We're, we're yeah. quite yeah. say again. Merlot, Merlot. <laughs> 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 all right, let's compose ourselves again. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, audience. <laughs> <laughs> well done hiding in a mug good idea but, but um, as, as we say um, I will put this article on our Facebook page for you to have a look to maybe read a bit more into it see what you think tell me see you made a good point just before we finished Gemma yesterday about okay maybe not maybe not um, going to the pub and having alcohol but there's nothing wrong with two mums getting together for a coffee in a cafe yeah. somewhere or in somebody's house or something just to just to have that social life back a little bit do you know what i mean and they were talking on on a program that we are built upon <laughs> the other day that actually um that some of them for the first time ever ha as a mom has gone away on their own for a week only to like escape just being a mom for a week just now, that's built for some people and just not built for others. There's, a, there's very much like that. I'm not sure I could, I, I need a break from my children. I don't, I don't think that works for me, but it, it may do for some of you out there. But sadly, that brings us to the end of this week's show. My word, it's been full of chatter. And we've had three feisty women fill in that <laughs> chatter box right up. Thank you so much. Will you thank my panel for this evening? Joining me, Nicholas James, is Sandra Overton, Gemma Love, and the Queen of Diva herself, Dee <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Join us next week where it will be Abby, Abby Victoria, Mandy Stannard, and hopefully Jay O'Connor if he's got internet. But we will have to see. But alcohol free stay out there enjoy your children going back to school and remember we're always here for a bit of a chat on a tuesday night good night alcohol free bless see you later